Surviving a fall from this height would be miraculous. It's impossible to tell whether the man is still alive. Breathe, baby, breathe! Oh. We got a towel or something? Please? He's got central chest pain, he's short of breath, he's clammy, he doesn't look well. Was he breathing really quick, guys? Was he breathing? He's gone now. If he stopped breathing and his heart stopped pumping, he's in cardiac arrest. Oh, oh, Analyzing heart rhythm. Analyzing. 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 The red button. Red button. Yeah. Everyone clear? Press shock one delivered. Oh, it is safe to touch the patient. All right, someone give me CPR now. Someone get on the chest. Someone get on the chest. You want? Yeah, I'll get Go. Continue. Oh. Oh, oh, Continue for one minute forty-five seconds. We get up. Oxygen, please. Someone. Continue for one minute fifteen seconds. Yeah. His heart's not functioning and he's not breathing, so his body's got no sign of life. Continue. It's a strange feeling pushing into someone's chest. You know you have to push really hard and go fast, but it is scary. How are you feeling, guys? Yep, switch up this one. Yeah, I'll come in. Doing compressions is hard work. You get tired, so I took over from Troy after about two or three cycles. You can set the blue one up. Continue. Continue. Now you went into this fit and I was terrible to witness because, you know, I hadn't seen that before. Now that's going to happen with the brain not receiving enough oxygen. Okay. Doing good, mate. Breathing on his own. It's good. Let me know if I keep going. It's such a relief. I could see him breathing again. Wipe his arm on that side for me. Can you give me a bit of an update as to what's happening? Because I just want to keep the wife in the loop. Yeah, mate, uh, Embo's here uh, working on him at the moment. He was conscious and alert when he came to us. The ambulance was down here within five minutes, so there has been a really good response time and all, all precautions have been taken. Sure. So just I don't want you to panic or anything, and I will keep you updated along the way as best I can, OK? Hi, pressure. Hi, mate, how are you going? As lifeguards. They've done their bit. As paramedics, we've done our bit. The next step is for the doctors and nurses to probably do an angiogram, see what sort of blockages there are and whatever the scenario is. Hey, how you going? G'day. How are you? Good, good. How are you? And you the guys that saved my life. I'm one of yeah. Doctors have said, basically, if you hadn't wired me up yeah. like, like that, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. I mean, the good thing was, we, when we got to you, you were conscious and you could give us your symptoms and yeah. to get there and have the time and to be able to prepare for it makes a big difference for us. Nicola had the worst job having to, to call your wife. Every time you phoned me, it was right at the right time. Oh, I got the reassurance I needed all the way through, oh, so good. it was right. really fantastic. Mate, you were just like SAS. It was like, <laughs> it was amazing, you know? What surgery did you do? Oh, they just put a balloon in it. Like, they, they, there's no stent or anything. They just, they just had to go in and, oh, it was amazing. When they hit the, the clot, and just sucked it out, and as soon as, because I was in so much pain, mate, it was like a, yeah, having a jackhammer, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and as soon as they sucked that out, instantly, it was like, oh, the pain's gone. It was like, wow, fantastic. You also said if it hadn't been for you guys, um, Kurt's condition would be a lot worse, so he's had minimal damage to his yeah, heart, yeah. which has been yeah, really I'll come out of it like I'm the luckiest guy alive. I know that about it at the moment. Oh, that's you know, good. As you guys and everyone else. You know, so. Halfway through the shoot, a dramatic event unfolds right beside them. The man's found floating, lifeless in the surf. Yeah, we've got to get up the beach. Yeah, yeah, the beach. Get yeah. Are we ready? Let's go. His name is Takahiro Ono, an English language student from Tokyo. Right. No one knows what's happened to him or how long he's been in the water. Right the Rally mo, rally mo, no. Someone go and get on the uh, radio. There's a radio on my bike and call for the doof here. Yeah. Check pulse. Hang on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hoppo can't detect a pulse. Bagging, come on. Yeah. He's not breathing. Bagging, come on, come on. Bagging. Tucker is clinically dead. 
You grab the knife. The boys must get his heart beating again and air into his lungs. It's a male, about 20 years old. They uh, got him on the bag now. I'll get back to him more. Yeah, I can't really feel that. Yeah, mate. Danny arrives with a defibrillator as Corey starts CPR. One, two, three, four, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Get a towel, get a towel. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Luke, what? what? Give Tucker still has no pulse. Stand clear, stand clear. Watch out. Everyone stand clear. 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 Stand Check pulse. There's no pulse. Give CPR. I can't get one. Start no, CPR. Right the deep fib doesn't work on Tucker Two, first time. Three, four, five, the machine five, needs time to recharge. Eight, Corey continues nine, CPR. 10, 11, 12. Your ambulance has been called. Paramedics are on the way. Just if you need anything else, give us the L. Yeah, copy that, Chapo. 30, 40, 50, 50. It's four minutes since lifeguards got to Tucker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The machine needs time to establish whether he has any heart rhythm. Stand clear. Do not touch patient. Analyzing rhythm. Tucker's had two shocks. He's in spasm. Patients rarely survive if they need more than three shocks. Tucker's been clinically dead for at least four and a half minutes. He has one chance left. I've lost it. Stand clear. Stand clear. Stand clear. Do not touch patient. Analyzing rhythm. The third shock has finally had an effect. Do not touch patient. Analyzing rhythm. I won't shock again. Breathe, Still staying good? Stand clear, stand clear. Analyzing rhythm. Breathing, yeah. It's all right, mate, it's all right. Pulse. There's no pulse, give CPR. He's got yeah. a faint pulse. He's, He's breathing, good. mate. It's getting stronger. Take Take a good pulse, strong. Strong. a good pulse here. Okay. He's been in the Stay water, good. and you swallowed a lot of water, okay? Stay, just relax, mate, just, just relax. relax. We're looking after you, okay? Understand? He's got a strong heartbeat now, strong heart. Just, just keep your head there, mate. It's OK. He's giving you some oxygen. It's OK, right, it's OK. It's right, buddy. It's OK, mate. Just relax. Just take it easy. Good work, boys. All of his eight. Good work. Try deep breaths, mate. OK? As they wait for an ambulance, lifeguards try and piece together the events that almost killed Tucker. What, what happened to him? I don't know, I, I, I allowed to swim in the water. And you just start kind of floating or what? Yeah. No one knows how long Tucker was clinically dead in the water. But for five minutes, the lifeguards kept him alive on the sand. Despite the trauma of a major medical emergency, Tucker knows who and where he is. What's your name? Takahiro. Takahiro, is it? Yeah. I know we are. Taka? Yeah. Where are you? Where? Bondi. He said Bondi. A shot of Maxilon will help stabilise Taka. Lifeguards and paramedics brace him on a spinal board. One, two, three, roll. They're concerned Taka may also be suffering a spinal injury. Perhaps he was violently knocked out in the surf. Was it, was it immersion related or? You think so? He was found at the edge Can of the water. Can you feel me clutching your elbow? So you pulled him out of the water. Yeah. Have you used it on an arrest before? Oh, we used to. We had 12 last year. Did you? Yeah. Oh, they're unreal, these things. Unbelievable. Oh, it's, it's got to have someone behind it, mate. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you blokes did all right? Tucker's alive, but the drama's far from over. How did he end up floating lifeless in the water? Has he damaged his spine? Will he suffer any brain damage from lack of oxygen? You happy to go on your own or do you want to? Yeah, we'll be right, thank you.
See you later. Thanks, well mate. done, you Thanks. saved his life. Yeah. You're great, you blokes. Thanks, Tucker's not out of danger yet. The lifeguards who brought Tucker back to life have come to visit after surgeons implanted a defibrillator in his chest. When I swam, I felt getting worse. So I, I thought I had to go back the oh, shore. She real, yeah. So you did realise something was wrong? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 It was amazing for us, like seeing someone but dead and then five minutes later, you're telling us what beach you're at. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. If you had to pick a place to suffer a heart attack, Bondi Beach is an ideal choice. The best place it could have been would have been the, the front door of the hospital, but um, if there was a second place, it would be the, the beach with the lifeguards around and the defibrillator nearby. Um, it saved his life. Well, last night, you kind of, I was at home and you're sort of thinking, you know, hopefully it all went right and everything, was, everything worked. And to see him today and see him like he it is, it's, it's amazing. Tucker's English is unclear, but his feeling <laughs> for the lifeguards isn't. I can't explain, but mm, like a god. Yeah, so Andrew, <laughs> yeah, Superman, superhero. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, good to see you sitting up and having a chat. No worries. Take care, buddy, and have a, enjoy the rest of your stay. Yeah, you're coming well, mate. So you don't know if the person's fallen, if it's a fisherman, or do you know and have any details like that? Well, somebody was reported off the cliffs near the golf course, over. Yeah, thank you. That was the information that I was after. Waverly clear. As police and paramedics arrive at the cliff top, lifeguards make the first assessment from the water. The precarious cliffs are popular amongst climbers. Surviving a fall from this height would be miraculous. It's impossible to tell whether the man is still alive. I wonder how far he fell from. No. Because that's a big drop, isn't it? Massive. Absolutely massive. What do you reckon? It's a good... Oh, 30 foot, isn't it? 30 foot, isn't it? 30 metres. I don't reckon police rescue or risk mention either in the wet. But they're gonna have to get him up somehow. Depending on how bad he is, mate, just bring him around here. That's what I mean, like, the boys will have to get him. There goes the chopper. There goes the chopper. A rescue chopper with paramedics aboard joins lifeguards and police. Uh, at this stage, we have a seriously injured male who has fallen from the top level of Bondi Golf Course. He's not in a real good way. The man still hasn't moved. The lifeguards have been an integral part of the whole process. They are actually in the water. They've been making assessments of the patient as the process has gone through, and they've been communicating what they've seen and what their experience is through to us, through the police, and through the Westpac's crew. An approach from the water is deemed too risky. A paramedic is winched down to the accident victim. He's alive, but it's still unclear exactly what happened to him. So we'll just have to wait and see and the, the wash up what really happened. Finally, he's on a spinal board, then safely winched into the rescue chopper. At nearby Prince of Wales Hospital, Adrian Smith counts himself lucky to be alive. And I just stepped on the wrong piece of rock. I can remember when I bounced, I whacked my chin and went blank. Then I come awake when I hit my back. And then I can remember rolling. And then that was it. All I felt was falling. And I remember just going, shh. And I was, I was like this, going through the air, just like, I can't believe this has happened. And it just went blank. And then I woke up, and I seen my feet. And I just remember looking at it, just going, oh, no. Like, I could literally pick my feet up and swing them. That's what it was like. Adrian suffered compound fractures to both legs and a broken jaw, but is thankful to be alive. At the end of the day, the only reason I am here is because emergency services got there, because the lifeguards, the police rescue, and the chopper got there. Get him out of the water. Get him out of the water. Ready? And then we'll start compressions up here. 
A swimmer has drowned at Bondi. Yeah, come on. Yeah, we need a mask. Face blue. No pulse. He's clinically dead. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Get him in. Get the back, come on. Get him in. Come on, back. 19, 20. I'm just going to keep going until you get the going. Just keep going. Okay. To restart his heart, lifeguards may need a defibrillator. Pulses as well. Ambo being called. Ambo being called. Let's get the defib. No, get... Maybe we need someone to come up and get a defib. The defib is in the tower, but Dunno can't leave the control post unmanned. Wait, wait. Head tilt, yep. The defib is vital. Dunstan has no choice but to enlist a passing backpacker. Oi, guys, guys, you're doing me a massive favour, man. Green shorts. Oi, man, you need to run this down. Oi, oi, buddy. Do us a massive favour, man. You need to run that down yes. to the other side of the flag. <laughs> See that flag, the flag down there? Someone's just drowned. Get down there. I need good, good. <laughs> I, promise, I, need good. I promise, I promise. Get down there, man. Run, run. Oi, run. Run, man. We need to get him up in the dry sea. I mean, the third Where's that deep in? We need it now. He's now been clinically dead for three minutes. 21, 22. Keep going, Chapo. Someone give Chapo a break. Yeah, I'll, I'll come in, I'll come in. Come on. Right. Let's go, wait, wait, wait. go. Right out. Let's go. Come on, Let's go. 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 Let's go.
항상 매일매일 이제 여러분들을 여러분들의 이제 도움을 잊지 않고 살고 싶어요. 네. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to see you smile. Thank you very much. It's pretty special to, to meet the guy and just to see him walking around. It's good. It's, uh, it's a good feeling. It's just the same walking around. It's good. It's just the same walking around. It's good. It's just the same walking around. A surfer has been attacked by a shark at Bondi Beach. The man is 33-year-old Glenn Augias, a local surfer. His left hand has nearly been severed. It's the most serious shark attack on Bondi Beach in decades. Approximately 20 surfers were in the break at South Bondi when Glenn was attacked. Some bravely rushed to his aid. There was blood sort of boiling out of the water around him and one of the guys saw him and, and said that he yelled something like shark. A bunch of us, like about uh, no, 10 of us all just guys put, him on a, put him on a softboard and then carried him up the beach and uh, you know, just waited for the ambulance. Pretty heavy. Ambulance came. Hopefully he'll be okay. Like these random guys come up and said, look, are you guys lifeguards? And me and Troy said, yeah. He said someone's been attacked by a shark down at Bondi. North Bondi Surf Club hit the shark alarm, so I come out from dinner and headed across, and then everyone was running down saying a gentleman's been bitten by a shark. It's been one of those summers, I think, boys, that they've been around, and uh, with a shark attack in the harbour a couple of days ago, yeah. so it was just only a matter of time, I think. Two French surfers were among the first to help Glenn. Where did they actually bite him? Where did it, his hand uh, was cut at this level, and um, there is just, just the skin who take the end. You know, his arm, his, arm, his arm was like that, and his hand was like that. And um, there is a big cut all around his arm. Uh, we, we saw all the muscles, all the bones. Did, did he actually talk about the shark to you? That he didn't see it, it was too quick? No, we, we, when, you, when you have a guy like that, who who have uh, the who lost his end? You don't want to speak it about the shark. You just we just uh, don't want to speak about it. Uh, I think he don't want to hear something about this shark because he he saw this hand and uh, yeah, that was a good idea. Yeah, at the beginning he saw his hand and uh, so we just tell tell him to don't look at the, don't look at his hand and uh, just look at us and just speak like speak 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 everything. Within minutes, the news of a shark attack at Australia's most famous beach is being around the world. He felt something hit him in the surf. He just caught a wave and he was going to paddle back out. Um, when he realised that he had suffered some injury, he wasn't sure what the cause of the injury was, that he signalled to other surfers nearby that he needed help and he was brought back to the beach. I think summer's over for now, especially um, a lot of people ask about the sharks, and now that there's been a shark attack, hasn't been a shark attack since 80, for 80 years, so people are pretty scared. Glenn returns to Bondi. How are you going? Go, fellas. Bacon. How are you? Nice Sorry, to meet what you. Bacon. 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 Tom. Tom, how are you? Good, mate. How are you? Good to meet you. This just works off the muscles in my arm, so it's just, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's like the latest technology. Can you rip things with it? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Like, you can hold a coffee, coffee cup and... Now you, know, you can do that pinch. And what about when you that's the yeah, some suburbs talking there. I like that. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah. But like when you look down, what was your whole arm was still there? But was a big chunk taken out? Stop oh, the it? hand was just hanging just off. Hanging it was hanging off by that much bit of skin, and bone was poking out, and that was all. Did you just like? Open. Did you feel you're going to pass out, or were you pretty calm? Yeah, I screamed, obviously. Yeah. That was kind of first thing that happened, and then I just, you know, you just do your best in that situation yeah. to. To get in, so. The shark attack on Glen Orges took place a year ago, and the details are still vivid. I got home late from work, probably went surfing a bit later than I usually would, so it was about 7.30 when I got in the water. The attack was never caught on camera, but CCTV footage taken at the same time shows a grey and overcast evening. Just as I was paddling back out after I'd um, caught a wave, yeah, I just uh, I got um, grabbed by something. I actually thought it was another surfer in this split instance that happened. I thought, so I paddled towards a wave, I thought oh, someone's trying to 
someone was trying to stop me to get a wave, so I tried to yank my arm back, and then I just got, um, yeah, pulled under the water and shook around. It took a while to realise what happened, um, but got back onto the board. Bits where I was in the water, you know, paddling back in, I don't really like talking about that, you know, what went through my mind and felt like forever, but it wasn't. Um, I've just been sold off over the surface at one guy's and his uh, hands taken off. When I got onto the beach is, is when the, you know, the community at Bondi really came together and to really help me out. Um, a couple of Frenchmen who were, who were surfing nearby and a couple of local surfers um, ran up the beach and, and helped me out of the water and um, put a tourniquet on my arm and that saved my life. I think if someone we was brave tonight is him. You can believe me when you see this guy. He, he was very, very.